Hallelujah. With my faith. So when it comes into the physical realm, it is the end result. Because I believed it from the first. I had faith. But it's not just enough for you to have faith. But divine manifestation is the end point of it. Hallelujah. And so that is one of the challenges we have in the church. And that is why the church in this dispensation is lacking power because why? The church is too much of thoughts, too much of things, but people are not seeing the end result. Because when the end result shows up, when the miracle shows up, people, the people of the world, the people of, of the society, the environment, they see that they are can testify that the power of God is in this person. But as long as we keep just talking, as long as we just keep on reading, and there is no manifestation. Hallelujah. The church is still lacking power. Amen. It's not that the power is not here, but it's because we have not been able to key into the manifestation. So I'll be sharing in a few minutes the keys of divine manifestation. Hallelujah. Yes, before I I start, I want us to go open our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. We're going to see a story. Uh, most of us are knowing about the story, but I just want to pick up one or two things from here. I pray I can be able to walk at this time. Hallelujah. I should try to round up my 11 30. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew, chapter 14. Verse 22. I will read because of time. I will read from 20, I'm going to read from 22 to 33. There's a story we all know about. about it's about us when we read it. But as straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him onto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the, the mountain. Apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wave was contrary. And in the fourth wash of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter said, answered him, and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of the truth, thou art. The Son of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, this is a story of Jesus. And you know, Jesus has just been with the multitude and Jesus has fed um, 5,000 people and did the miraculous. And you know, after that, we're still with the disciples and the winds were blowing and Jesus went to the mountain to pray. And so, he allowed them to go before him and the winds were blowing the sheep and they they, they, they've actually just been with Jesus and they've tested the power of God. Hallelujah. And they began to panic. And Jesus began to come and walk on the sea. And the people saw, because they could not recognize him, because why? They were not actually, I think they were not actually focusing, they were not on that same level of spirituality. So they could not, otherwise they say, ah, this is something, somebody strange. This is a spirit being, because it's supernatural, it's it's not physical, it's something beyond the sense, it's something beyond science, something beyond our reasoning level. Now, for a man to float on the sea, it has defied the laws of gravity. Are you getting it? Hallelujah. And now he's walking on the sea, and he said, is this a spirit? 
And Jesus answered and said, no, be of good cheer. It is I. Hallelujah. So just say, no, you don't need to bother. You don't need to be afraid. Because why? It is me that is walking on the sea. Then Simon Peter said, Lord, if it is you that is on the sea, I challenge to come out and walk on the sea. And Jesus said, come to me. And immediately Peter, Peter got out of the ship with faith, believed in Jesus, and began to walk on the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'll go further, but before I get to I want to go. One of the keys I'll start on, I have the four things I'm going to, the four keys I'm going to just bring out. He said, understanding that we are called to manifest is one key. One of the ways and one of the key to divinely manifest is for you to have an understanding that you are born to be miraculous. Hallelujah. You are born. It is not. Maybe that you're trying, it is your nature when you take it as your being. You are, as a believer, you are born to manifest the miraculous. So it takes one of the key for us to operate in the miraculous or to operate in divine manifestation is for you to have the mindset, for you to know that you are born for the miraculous. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because of time, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8. Okay, I want us to read. Let's read it. Let's read it. Romans 8, verse 18. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 18. Anyone there can read for me because of time. So I can keep it fast. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 18. Is anyone there? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time mm -hmm. are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 19. For the earnest expectation of the future waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, please go keep going to 21, sir. For the creature was made subject to vanity, mm -hmm. not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Mm -hmm. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. So we can see here that Paul is telling us that whatever we are going through is not compared to the glory that is revealed in us. Hallelujah. Amen. And the world is earnestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I want to bring you to understand that it was God's original plan for us to manifest on earth. Hallelujah. And you see, I'll just go into the, let me go into the scenario of the Garden of Eden. You know, in the Garden of Eden, you know, Adam manifested. Hallelujah. When God created us, you see, He put His Spirit in us. His Spirit is there. Hallelujah. And we have a soul. Hallelujah. Which is also a spirit. And it's going to, that's where our mind is. Hallelujah. Our emotions are. Then we have a body. So these three connect. So, God's Spirit needs to be linked with the soul of a man. Hallelujah. And the soul of the man needs to take charge of the body. Can you see the connection? So what happened in the in the in the garden of Eden, you see, uh, is that one of the things that the enemy tried to deceive us was deceiving us from our original nature. Hallelujah. And telling us to be what we have already become, what we already are. Hallelujah. So because the woman did not understand, she didn't understand that she was already God. Now, look at the Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. You can see God's plan there. He said, He said, He said, Let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. So, meaning, 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 God was original plan for man was to what? To be like Him. Hallelujah. To be like Him. So that he can and to have a soul to be able to make choices, but to be able to live with the body on earth. So God's plan was actually to dominate a true man. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So, that is why the Bible says, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you, if you understand, if you see in that same Romans chapter, chapter 8 that we just read, I want to read the verse somewhere around somewhere around verse 29. Now look about, look about that. To show you that it was God's plan, listen to this. He says, For whom he did for known, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among brethren. Hallelujah. For him for known. So before you existed, God already knew you because why? Look at it. He said, Let us create what? Man in his own image and after his likeness. That what, what was he saying here? That he said that what that let me read it again from the Bible. So that, that particular thing. He says here in verse 3, he says, Hallelujah. I hope you get this God, my God. He said, he said, to, he said that predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So from the beginning, God already had designed Jesus. My God, you get it, you get it. He has designed Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Are you getting me? So he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And what God was, what God did in the beginning was he, he already prepackaged you in the image of Christ. But something happened. Deception came in. And when sin came, there was a there was a breakout. There was no communication between the image of God and man. Because man left original package and now started to think on his emotion and intellect. Are you getting me? So, at that point, man could not apprehend the things of God. Hallelujah. Because when man has left spirituality and is now dwelling on self knowledge. I was saying, when Sabbath came to Eve, the tree of life was there. Why did he not say that she should have the tree of life? Hallelujah. Amen. If, if the man had tested the out of the tree of life, even before the good of knowledge and evil, you know, man would have been so blessed. But the knowledge of evil, what happened? Wrong information, corruption into the data came into the place. Hallelujah. And as long as the data of self came into being and not trusting what God has put in you, there was a breakage. Hallelujah. That was when man lost that communion. So at that point, the soul and the body of man. Because man, man was living, man, the soul is a spirit, hallelujah, of man, of a person. But the spirit of God is what is God in everyone, hallelujah. So, is, man's soul needs to connect with the spirit to be able to apprehend the things of God. But when man stopped connecting with the spirit, man started living on sense knowledge. Hallelujah. That was why when Thomas said, Anna, where are you? He said, I am wicked. God said, who told you? Sense knowledge was looking at the physical. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Did you get me? Yes. Amen. So, one of the things that God has put in us, if you understand this particular foundation, that God has already created you for the miracle. That is why the Bible says, in the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus, now leaves you. Hallelujah. What Jesus Christ came to do, Jesus Christ came to do what Adam could not do. And the Bible calls him the last Adam. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is a prototype or an example of what God's original plan was for man from the onset. Hallelujah. God living in man, walking upon the surface of the earth. Hallelujah. So when you are, do not understand what you carry, you do not understand what you have, you will be lacking the ability to operate in the 
supernatural. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we can see from the story when Peter spoke to Jesus, Jesus said, Call out to him. Jesus did not tell him. He said, Come and Peter immediately had faith. And Peter, without anything, more than what? And operated in the miraculous. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus did not hold the hands of Peter. Jesus did not. Jesus only said, Come out to me. And Peter immediately switched into the spirit. He switched from the, from the things around him and switched into the supernatural and began to operate from the inner. And when you begin to operate in that level, you are not seeing the things of the earth. You are not beaten. Because why? Even though you are a physical being, you are operating in the spirit inside of you and begin to do the miraculous. That is why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. You begin to know that, that there is something inside of me that commands divine manifestation. There is something inside of me that commands the miracle. Yeah. But if you do not understand, though you are filled with power, you will still lack the ability. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, take me to the second key. Hallelujah. Amen. Trying to work out. Now, from the same story, as Peter began to walk on the sea. At the time Jesus called Peter, Peter did not look. He was not concerned about his brethren. He was not concerned about the sheep. He was not concerned about the environment. He was not concerned about the wind. But as he stepped out of the boat, his eyes were focused on Jesus. And as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he could do the miraculous. Because why? It was Jesus that was inside of him that empowered him to do the miraculous. As long as Peter kept looking on to Jesus, he could walk. He said, come on to me and kept looking at the master and was walking on top of the sea. But immediately the Bible says, as Peter began to fear, Fear came and he began to sink. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, if you look at it, <laughs> it is good to have faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Focusing on Jesus is the key. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Jesus, in another translation, Jesus, this one said, the one I read, said, Why did you doubt? Yeah. And Socrates says, you, What happened? When he was started singing, Jesus heard him and said, Peter, what happened? He said, why did you doubt? So what was Jesus saying? As long as you can focus on me, you will continue to walk on the sea, no matter the situation that comes around. But as long as you they are distracted, you lost focus on me and begin to take around the situation. You know, when the enemy wanted to tell that the, 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 the one of the dead he said, Can you see how beautiful the fruit is? That was the destruction technique. He, didn't know, he said, He made her to see the beauty of what was around her, and that made her to lose focus on the original thing. Hallelujah. So as Peter began to walk on the sea, he began to listen to the storm. And as he smiled, as he heard the storm from the side, his focus was lost and he began to sink. Hallelujah. He began to sink. And that's what happens to us. A lot of us, that is one of the things why we do not see manifestation at the time we are, because sometimes the church starts, we have faith. Faith is the starting point. Hallelujah. But people believed in Jesus. And that was why he took the step of faith. 